I'd like to call this meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, September the 28th, 2021. It's 9 a.m. We're in the Century Drew Room of the Hood County Justice Center at 1200 West Pearl Street in Granbury, Texas. We are fortunate today to have uh, James Long, who's the president of Gideon's International here. And it's very fitting that he'd be here today because this is the first Commissioner's Court since the passing of Dr. Bill Miller, who's been here ever since that I started and got always lined up all the ministers for here. And uh, Dr. Miller and James are very good friends. So please stand and let Dr. Long give us the invocation this morning. Please pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We're grateful, Father, that we are Americans and enjoy the freedoms to praise you without fear of oppression. This morning, Lord, we pray for our leaders, our cities, our counties, our states, and our nation. God, would you please grant them wisdom, understanding, and the courage to make the right decisions in all matters of governance. This morning, Lord, we ask for your healing for our world for this COVID pandemic. Please, God, comfort and strengthen those who have lost loved ones. Father, we ask a special blessing for our dear friend and Pastor Bill Miller. We ask you that you would just be with his wife, be with his sons, God, that you would just, God, come around them and let the community support them in anything that they might need, God. It's such a loss for a great man in our community. Father, we pray that you will lead us and guide us and let us be your servants here in this earth. And when you're through with us in this life, that you would take us home where we can be with you in heaven forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of the United States. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in the Pledge of Texas. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. It is my pleasure today to have a very uh, special proclamation here for a very special person in our community. And uh, I want to have uh, Bill Con uh, Bob Conaway come down here to read something, and I'm going to come down there with him, and then we're going to have a, a bunch of people come down there with us. But this is a guy that probably all of y'all have known and seen around town. He does a lot for the community and he's a very good guy and least of which he was able to start out as a grunt marine and make it all the way up to a CWO5. I'm going to steal a little of your thunder. Yes, you this are. Is always, <laughs> this has always really got to me that it's easier to become a general in the Marines than it is to become a Chief Warrant Officer 5 and that's what my that's what our friend Michael Musman did. But let me come down there. <clears throat> Bob Conway is going to read a little bit about why this guy deserves this award. <clears throat> Marine Gunner, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Michael Musselman, retired. <clears throat> Mike was contacted August 21st by a friend asked if he could possibly assist while getting two young boys out of Kabul, Afghanistan. After making hundreds of phone calls to friends and contacts, he was put in touch with some former military and other agencies people. Finally, after working with U.S. Marines on the ground in Kabul, they were able to extract them on Wednesday, the 25th of August. <clears throat> after the deadly explosion at Abbey Gate, extracting people became more and more difficult. With help and a lot of hard work, he and the rest of the teams were able to extract several more teams and get them to safety. However, there were still dozens more trapped behind outside the gates. 
The team kept after it and in the following weeks they were to get several more families to Mozar, Mozar El Sharif and other cities away from the Taliban violence. He still has over 35 people he is trying to move to safety by calling, writing, and emailing contacts on Capitol Hill and the Pentagon requesting assistance. The most remarkable thing is that he was able <coughs> excuse me, to accomplish all this from his cell phone and his home computer while sitting in Granbury, Texas. His wife, a Hood County employee, Christine Musselman, is also a proud patriot and has been very supportive of his efforts. Mike is a wonderful Christian and a proud, proud patriot. He served in the U.S. Marine for 30 years, and we are proud to call him our friend. Now, Mike is a member of a Wednesday, go on if you want to. Mike is a group of a Wednesday lunch and a bunch of Christian men that get together. Uh, included in that list are Ron Massengill, Biff Temple, Dwayne Harris, David Fisher, Jim Sharp, Mike Self, Steve Walston, Randy Johnson, Tom McElroy, Bob Conaway, Danny Tuggle, Jack Wilson, Doug Gillum, Mike Sanders, Ralph Chris, Ralph Elkins, Tom Merritt, and Buck Schrader. You'll notice we have a lot of judges on there. We have retired judges. We have two federal retired agents. Uh, it's a pretty impressive list of people that came to honor Mike Musselman today. Thank you very much. I tell you, this is a work of love for Bob Conway here, and I think everybody here, it's a real, a real honor for all of us to be here to honor this guy. So. Based upon that good research there, I have a proclamation I want to read. Proclamation to designate September 28, 2021 as Mike Musselman Day. Whereas voluntary service is an integral part of the operation and spirit of Hood County. And whereas Mike Musselman served honorably for 31 years as a U.S. Marine. And whereas in August of 2021, Mike Musselman was involved in the digital Dunkirk operation, the evacuation of Afghan citizens from Kabul. And whereas this operation was successful in evaluating, evacuating several families from the deadline of August the 31st. And whereas since that deadline, Mike has continued to assist in moving families throughout Afghanistan, coordinating their rescue through other countries. And whereas during Mike's time in Hood County, he has served the community through teaching women's safety classes and weapons training. And whereas with Mike's wife, Christine, a Hood County employee, has made Hood County a better place to live. Therefore, I, Ron Massengill, judge of Hood County, along with all members of the Hood County Commissioner's Court, do hereby proclaim this day, September the 28th, 2021, as Mike Musselman Day. Congratulations, Mike Musselman. This is a real hero, and he does it and wants no credit. It's kind of embarrassed for him to even come up here, but this is a very good guy, and if anybody needs anything, he's always there to help, so I really do mean that. Does the Commissioner's Court want to come down here? Let's get a photo op with <coughs> Yeah, and let's get, you want to get the Wednesday? Wednesday to, luncheon group, you want to come up also? Let's <laughs> get There's some on wanted list, so she maybe. She won't come uh, up. But she won't. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> she won't come. Get her. We've asked Christine Musselman to come up here, and she refuses to. <laughs> this kind of shyness kind of runs in the family here. <laughs>
Thank you all very much for that. Uh, I want to remind everybody that if you want to speak on any of the agenda items today, you have to fill out a public participation form that the sheriff has back there or that DD has back there. So if you want to speak on anything, please fill that out because if we get to the agenda item and we don't have a form, you're not going to be allowed to speak. So please do that. So now we have uh, the service awards and we have Ms. Melissa Welburn. Who do you have? Good morning. The first award goes to Terry Meyer. However, I don't think she's here this morning. The 25 year award goes to Stephen Mahaffey. Okay. Looky here, 25 years. He's only 35 years old. <laughs> sure. I want to tell you something about Steve. Coming down here to this courthouse, he's always here. Come on up here. He's always here, and he even rides a motorcycle. And he's also a chaplain. This guy's everything. And he's also a good guy and a good friend. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Like, yes, you're. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> brings us down to the consent agenda. Does any commissioner wish to pull anything from the consent agenda? Yeah, yes, Judge. I've got two items, uh, F1 and H. Okay. I'd approve request to exempt purchasing from the competitive bidding process for the purchase of VZ campaign finance software from Easy Vote Solutions pursuant to the Hood County Purchasing Policy as an item that can be attained from only one source. So what is your, you want to pull it or discuss it or what's your? Oh, I would just like to discuss it and, and get it to let people understand what this is about and what the cost is. And I have a couple of questions for the elections administrator. Okay, well go ahead. Okay, uh, good morning Judge uh, Commissioners. Uh, this is basically, um, uh, the elections administrator is looking to purchase uh, some software for $3,000. Normally, Hood County uh, purchasing policy would require two quotes for this, but because there is only one company without a competitor, uh, we're asking for an exemption uh, of that policy. And uh, let the election administrator explain uh, in more detail about the software itself. <coughs> Okay, good morning. Good morning. So the reason why I was bringing this to court is there are several great things about this actual software that would allow you guys as can or office holders and candidates to file their campaign finance literally virtually rather than have to come into the office. It eliminates you having to get any type of um, notarization on it. It would be, it would provide a digital signature. Once we receive it, it would have a, a timestamp. So let's say it's due like on the 15th, if you can't be in the office by five o'clock, as long as it hits my email by midnight or before midnight, then it's still considered on time. Um, it, pr it will provide you with an automatic reminder of when to file. It allows the filers to file from anywhere. So you won't have to come to the office and you can submit your documents like I said, via this system, especially good with all the current COVID-19 protocols. Um, it has the ability to file using a wizard, minimizing mistakes. Using the wizard makes data searchable by dollar amount, contributor, et cetera. It adds transparency and limits to FOIA requests since the data is available online. And last, it allows the elections office to focus on elections and automates the campaign finance process. And by that, we are just a keeper of records. 
right? We're not the grader of forms. So when you guys bring your forms in, we just stamp it and you turn it in and that's all. So this will eliminate you guys having to come in. One of the greater things I found with this, because I used it in my last county was, just like here, my office is in the early voting location. So those of you who have an opponent and have your eight day report won't have to come in and be scrutinized for being in a poll site during election time. I think that that's one of the better things on it. I mean, I used it in Aransas County. I had no complaints. All you have to do is sign a form and then I give you your information to become a user. You get your user and password. If you have a treasurer, you can share this information with your treasurer. It's constantly running. So as you receive money and expend money, you can just log in and keep track of it that way rather than have to get your um, statements at the end and rush to get it to me. So you can use it even when it's not filing time. Okay. So <clears throat> I guess the major question I've got is I'm still kind of a sticks and flints guy. And can you, will their option be to just regularly file it or are you gonna? Well, the it, option is there, but then it puts it on us, me and my assistant to scan it and put it into the system. I mean, I'm not gonna turn you away. If you come in with your paperwork, I'm not gonna be like, no, you have to file online. So yes, you can bring in your paperwork to us. That was my question, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Anything else? That's all I got on that one. Okay. Oh, we got a speaker, I think. Yes, Ms. Samuelson. <coughs> Good morning. I have a, a couple questions about this. Um, I did, she did answer one of the questions, what, which was, will this be optional or is this going to be a requirement? Um, the other question I had was, was this something that was asked for by the current elected officials because of the um, complexity or burden of filing? Um, manually. I didn't know if that was something that elected officials had asked for, so that was a question. Um, and then also, just to verify, I see on the, the letter, and thank you again for putting the attachments on the agenda so that we can really prepare for the questions that we might have. Um, Easy Vote is uniquely positioned as the only vendor that is approved by the Texas Ethics Commission for the use at the county and municipal level. Um, I just was trying to verify that comment and uh, reached out to the Texas Ethics Commission. I don't know if anyone else has done that. Um, and they didn't have an answer for me right away. They're getting back to me. Um, but one of the things that they did say was other counties such as Dallas, Travis, Harris, um, have developed their own electronic software that could be available for purchase if Hood County wanted to reach out to those counties to see if, if their um, software that they've developed in-house was available. So that's just some information for you to think about as far as does this fit the um, criteria of single source when there, there is software out there um, that c could possibly be purchased by Hood County to do this. And then the other question was, is it gonna be optional? And she answered that question. So that's all I had, thank you. Thank you. Okay, other than that, is there, oh, you said, is there any other questions regarding the easy campaign finance software. Okay. Uh, you had said H, Commissioner Eagle, the Tyler. Yeah, yes, Judge. That was uh, authorizing to sign the uh, Tyler contract. Uh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, I, I just wanted to have an up and down vote on that to stay consistent with my earlier vote. That's all. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was doing the PowerPoint. Um, really, if uh, so, really, all this does um, before we signed the contract originally with Tyler, all it did was our SAS fees every year. Um, 
were October to September. And of course, like I said, when we signed our new contract with Tyler for the migration and everything, it moved our SAS fees to July and June. And all this amendment does is move our annual fees back to the original dates from October to September. Because normally we pay all of our software maintenance, all of our hardware maintenance, everything at the very beginning of the fiscal year in October. First court in October, we probably spend half a million dollars just in software maintenance alone. And that's all this does is move that back to October. So basically it's just, uh, it's the amendment's just moving a date back that's already been voted on by this yeah. court? Yes. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. No, I'm not going to clarify. Yes, sir. Those? Yes, sir. Okay, so with that, do I hear a motion regarding the consent agenda? So moved. Okay, got a motion by Commissioner Wilson to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Andrews. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Okay, the next deal is, uh, well, no road, uh, well, road ops none, right, okay, now we have development. Okay, what you got, a public hearing to discuss and consider the replats, we have to convene into a public hearing. So at this time, at 9.22, we are going to hereby convene into a public hearing to discuss and consider the replat of the Barbara's Frizzler Acres, and I turn it over to Mr. Clint Head. Morning, Judge. Morning, Commissioners. This re this is a replat of Brazos River Acres, lots 38R, <coughs> 39R. This replat's adjusting the lot line between lots 38 and 39, and we'll be creating a 2.277 acres lot called lot 38R, and a 1.326 lot called lot 39R. This property is located in the road corridor district in Precinct 2 and served by Aqua Texas and on-site sewage facilities. Staff has reviewed this replat. All comments have been addressed. Staff recommends approval of the replat of lots 38R and 39R as presented. If any discussion or questions to the commissioner or Mr. Head? If not, we're gonna reconvene back into the commissioner's court and it is now 924. So do I hear a motion? Judge, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the replat of the Brazos River Acres, lots 38R and 39R. Second. Okay. A motion has been made by Commissioner Cotton to approve the replat of <coughs> Brazos River Acres, lots 38R and 39R, second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next item, Mr. Head. This next item we're going to discuss and to appropriate action to allow the judge to sign the final plat of Cartwright Ranch that was approved through Parker County. Back at the April 13th court, the court approved an interlocal agreement that was executed on May 10th when Parker County approved and signed it. The final plat has been approved by Parker County and the now development's bringing this request before the court to consider allowing the judge to sign the final plat so it can be recorded at the plat records. This plat requires to be filed in both counties because a portion of it is in Hood County so they can have a chain of title of every piece of land that's in the county. So you recommend that we all sign that? Yes, sir. Okay. Development recommends if we sign it. Okay. Any further questions or discussion to Mr. Head? Do I hear a motion? Yeah, Judge, I'll make the motion to uh, allow you to sign the final plat of Cartwright Ranch. That was approved in Parker County according to the interlocal with the commissioner's court approved on May 10th, 2021. Second. Okay. We have a motion made by Commissioner Andrews to allow the county judge to sign a final plan of the Cartwright Ranch. It's approved by Parker County according to the interlocal. Commissioner's court approved on May 10th of 2021, second by Commissioner Cotton. Any further discussion? All those in agreement say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion <coughs> carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Head. Okay, bring us down to financial. Ms. Becky Kidd. 
Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. First item on under financial is regarding payment of invoices. You've all received advance documentation regarding all invoices to pay, plus a spreadsheet for payments over $10,000. The first item on that we'll discuss briefly is we're paying off a loan. That's saving us $8,000. It doesn't sound like much, but it knocks out two payments for the next two years of $450,000 and $455,000. So that just frees up money for buying other equipment if necessary. Any questions regarding these invoices or this spreadsheet? I, did, I want to make a comment just about the uh, the jail in Mount housing. Uh, and I know there's nothing you can do about it, but this is really the court is going to have to do something. That's $69,000 in a month. That's we're t pushing a million dollars a year for housing inmates. So I, I know there's a lot of work to be done, justification uh, of additional facility here. But I just want to make the court aware. I know I'm concerned about the fact that we're spend that kind of rent money uh, for housing. Uh, so that's just a comment. And normally in months past, that was 13 to 20,000. Yep. So it has made a significant jump in the last few months. The sheriff is back there saying, yeah, give me a new jail. That'd be fine. I can do it. <laughs> I, I see a bunch of citizens out here saying, hey, they don't build these jails for nothing. We're talking a million dollars. You want to come down here, Sheriff, and explain why we've got so many new inmates? Are you doing that good of a job? Well, last time I came up here, they shot me down when I said I needed a new jail. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say we didn't say no. <laughs> no, you didn't. But it, business is booming. Um, you know, we're trying to keep everything under control. But what that means when they break the law, we bring them to jail. So. Uh, the JPs are working great as far as the Class C stuff, taking them before the JPs. They don't come to jail, but these are the people that I have in my jail are um, people that most of them are felons or working on becoming a, a felon. So uh, it is what it is, and we're doing the best we can to uh, keep the Hood County safe and sound for the citizens. But yeah, we've got to um, house them. And uh, unfortunately, I thought I'd never break another record again, but. I think I'm up to 1,013 days for an inmate in custody. So um, the last last one was like 1,002 days. So, <clears throat> but Judge Buffkin is working hard. The DA is working hard to try to get him through the system. Um, the DA tells me he's overworking me because we're trying to get so many cases on the docket. But uh, so they're working hard to try to get it all cleared up and run them through. But we still got a full jail and three other county jails that I'm using that have have people in there. So, sorry, um, I feel like I'm a conservative sheriff, but in this case, I can't do anything else but house them out of county. So, can you give us a forecast? Is this going to continue? You think? Well, <laughs> things always seem to go up a little bit in the summer, and then they calm down a little bit after that. And and I think today's count was. 233, so yeah. it's down quite a bit. I think there for a while we're up to 248, almost 250 for a daily count total in the system, not because this would only hold 192 people up here. Uh, so we're down quite a bit. We just hauled off last week uh, seven to prison. Um, actually, maybe we had like eight to prison because we took one to state jail. Um, that was supposed to go the week before. So we're getting them out. They're slowing down on accepting inmates into the prison system because of COVID still. Uh, they've had a flare up uh, and that's what held up one of the state jail people. But we're moving them through. Everybody's on top of the paperwork. So as soon as we get the packets, we send them off. So uh, we're just, then it's usually like 10 days to two weeks that we get uh, the approval for the a prison system and then we get them shipped just right away. So we're doing the best we can. The system's working like it's supposed to. Unfortunately, we probably need a new jail and probably need a second district court, so. <laughs> Thank you for that report, Sheriff. You're welcome. Okay. Judge, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the expenditures, the <clears throat> $1,873,204.01. Second. Okay, 
Commissioner Cotton has made a motion to pay the bills, the total amount of $1,873,204.01, second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries 5 0. <coughs> Judge, you have Ms. The next item are the monthly reports that we receive in our office for the prior month activity. We have reviewed all these, see no problems, and ask you to accept them as a court record. Is, I noticed that the only report that's not been received and reviewed is from Constable Precinct 2. What's the status on that? That's a good question, sir. I don't know. Um, we have no authority to make them turn in a report. We highly encourage them to turn it in by the 15th of the month. We just did not receive it. And on the tax assessor, we have not received their August, but we are working with them. They had a, a glitch from the state level, and we are diligently working to get that straightened out. And we have all confidence that the tax assessors will be handled promptly and have that on here for the next month. I, the constable, I don't know. Report and caveats from the county auditor. Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion to accept the financial reports. <coughs> Second. By Commissioner Cotton to accept the financial report. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Judge Commissioners, you've all received advanced copies of the audit report for the health department, the environmental health department. There were no issues with this review and we ask that you accept this as presented. Okay. Okay, any questions or discussion about the 21 review of the environmental health financial records? No, no sir, motion to accept. Motion. Motion, motion to, to accept, accept the 2021 review. Yes, Second. Sir. Okay. Motion been made by Commissioner Eagle to accept the 2021 review of the Environmental Health Financial Records. Second by Commissioner Cotton. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. All right. Next one, approve corrections to the 2021-22 salaries and process line item transfers as necessary. Yes, ma'am. Found a few mistakes, a few corrections that needed to be made. I have talked to each of you about these. I see no issues with these and just ask that you accept these changes and we'll move on. Okay. Do I hear an appropriate motion? Yeah, Judge, I'll make the motion to approve the correction to the 2022 salaries and process the line item transfers as necessary. Second. A motion made by Commissioner Andrews to accept the corrections to the 2022 salaries and process line item transfers. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Kidd. Okay, this brings us down to the miscellaneous items. And the first one is to discuss and take appropriate action to authorize a county judge to sign the Hood County Teen Court Community Service Agreement to allow all youths or youths to who agree to voluntarily perform community service for Hood County. Who's here? You're here to speak on that? Well, if y'all had any questions, um, Ron Johnson with, I believe, King's Court. I'm sorry? You're with King's Court? Is here that can answer any question. Mr. Johnson approached me on allowing the teens that need community service <coughs> a chance to work on Saturdays because the collection station is open. They will not be operating any equipment. They will be running magnets and sweeping and cleaning and picking up at the collection station because we're open from 8 to 1 on Saturdays. That's a good, that's a good policy. Okay. I have some work out at the ranch if they want to do that too. Does that qualify? 
good work. It will really make them into strong human beings. Okay, so that's a really good, that's a good, good idea. Okay, so they won't handle any heavy equipment or anything. Just sweeping, picking up. People, will people be out there from your department, Jeannie? To, yeah. Will people be out from your apartment to supervise yes, it? I, I have two that um, are assigned out there on Saturdays that will be there. And they will be the ones that sign off on the forms that the teams actually uh, completed the hours of community service. Okay. So they'll have it to turn back in. Okay, any other questions or discussion? Okay, well thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I will help them out and thank help you. the county out too. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, good deal. Do I hear an appropriate motion? Yeah, Judge, I'll make a motion to uh, allow county judge to sign the Hood County Teen Court Community Service Agreement. Second. Okay. Motion made by Commissioner <coughs> Andrews to allow the authorized county judge to sign the Hood County Teen Court Community Service Agreement. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next. Discuss and consider nominations for Hood Central Appraisal District Board of Directors. And we just got uh, an explanation here from Mr. Mills. Is that right? Do you want to come here very quickly and tell us what that is? Okay, yes. Uh, sorry about somewhat conflicting emails yesterday, but hopefully you got the second one and uh, everything's good. So. Uh, I was kind of scrambling to get up to speed with what we're doing on this thing, but uh, basically by October 15th, we have to submit a list of nominees for the vote, but then the actual vote itself has to be done before December 15th. Um, so what happens before uh, the 15th of October is all the entities, if they want to nominate names, they can. Those are sent to the chief appraiser. He then uh, puts a ballot together of all the names that are submitted by all the entities, and then we can vote on what names we want to, uh, and we have a voting strength of 1,290 votes. It's based on this formula, based on how big our levy is, and so we can then vote uh, to allocate those votes to two candidates, three candidates, one candidate, however you want to do it, but we can leave that for another day. So. Um, the city of Granbury and GISD have already uh, voted and they both put five names forth and in two of those names are duplicate names. So in other words, they both nominated the same two of those people. Um, so y'all can put forth your list of names that'll just be on the ballot and then before December 15th, we'll have to actually vote on any of the names that are submitted, whether they're your names or somebody else's. Okay. <clears throat> before December 15th? Right. Okay. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Well, yes. Yeah. And I've got a list of all the names. I ask all the commissioners here to submit a list. And uh, uh, Commissioner Eagle submitted the names of Randy Moore and Mark McDonald. And I submitted the name of Ron Sutton, Rod Litke, and Jerry Lear. And uh, Commissioner Wilson submitted the name of Rick Fry. And um, David Johnson and Ron Cotton submitted the name of Monty Lewis and Mike LaRose. And did you submit? I was it? with you on the Rod Litke and <laughs> Ron Sutton, yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so that's, that's the names. We'll submit okay. all of those names and okay. then we'll get. And just yes. FYI, three of those are already on. I think Randy Moore was submitted by the city of Granbury, and then Mark McDonald and Ron Sutton were submitted by GISD. So there's a little bit of overlap already. So right. So, so we'll there, are, there are if this okay. I'll make a motion that we just submit all nine names to for nomination. Nominate all nine people that have been submitted so far to the Hood County Appraisal District to be placed on the ballot. I hear a second. Second. Okay. 
Motion been made by Commissioner Eagle to submit all nine names that have been nominated by the various commissioners, second by Commissioner Cotton. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, that brings us down to item number three. Consider and take appropriate action to approve and sign the interlocal agreements for the nine Hood County Volunteer Fire Departments for 2021. 2022. Yes, sir. Fire Chief, Fire Marshal. Yes, sir. Jeff Judge, Commissioners. Uh, this is basically the uh, contract we hold with the volunteer fire departments for them to provide services and we give them support. Okay. It's pretty much the same contract we've had every year. There's a couple of additions in there. I've asked them to provide uh, monthly profit and loss statements, uh, a couple of little things. And of course, we change the subsidy amount. <laughs> And every contract is identical to all, all the rest of them. With the exception of Grand Bridge, yes, With sir. The, the, yeah, the, they're leasing them, paying for workers' comp and... Correct. And some insurance, right? Yes, this, sir. This is an annual contract that we signed with them, isn't that correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Kidd has a... Bank statements? I, I, I've asked them for those, yes. Is it in the contract? It's not written in the contract, no. I, I wrote it in there as profit and loss statements. We had that discussion... Right, but they, these had already been signed by all nine of the fire chiefs before you and I had that discussion. Possible to do an addendum? That I, I really want you to. I really want you to because profit and loss, it doesn't help when I audit their actual expenditures. Does that make sense? If we, I want to support the fire departments, but we're going to get asked a lot of questions with doubling their stipend. Where's the money going? Does anybody disagree with that? Do you think we'd have a problem just doing a one-page addendum and just letting them? I mean, you've already got a contract, Simon. We can do an addendum to it. We can, yes. So what are we, what are we asking for? I wasn't real clear. Bank statement. Pardon? Bank statements. Oh, okay. I got you. I'd prefer the bank statements over the profit and loss. How about both? Both are fine. Okay. What do you think? You think you get that done? Some of them may, may take some convincing. I, I've talked to a couple of them, and they're a little reluctant to release their bank statements. Why that? Why that? I, I didn't dive real deep into that, but they don't have any problem with doing the profit and loss statements to show how the money that we're providing to them is being used and spent. But I, I, don't, I don't know why they're reluctant on the bank statement part. I think they're worried that if they show that they have money in the bank that we're going to feel like we don't need to support them. Because I know some of them have done a good enough job of budgeting that they have probably a two years operation budget in reserve. And on top of that, a lot of them have to keep money in a savings account to qualify for grants. Well, I would reward them for being parsimonious rather than uh, dinging them for it, so. And, and, and I feel the same way, but they're, they're afraid that if they show that they have money in the bank that we're not going to want to support them at the level that we are supporting them. Well, uh, well we've already been stepping up the, the, the financial help with these, all of them, and we're, yes, sir. you know, we're, we're looking at spending, or, you know, spending some more money on equipment. Yes, sir. And all we're asking for is transparency, so I'm Correct. finding it hard to, we've doubled our stipend, right? Yes, sir. I find it hard to, I don't, I, I don't find it unreasonable to ask them, let, let us see your bank statements. I, I agree. And profit and loss. Well, yeah, you've already got, they've already agreed to that, right? Well, yes, and, and if they've all signed and agreed to that profit and loss statement already. Okay. I just didn't have any language in there that said to include your bank statement. Mr. Mills, we can just do a one, little one-page addendum on the bank statement, can't we? There you go. So do we do we do we approve this with the uh, stipulation? That they, with the stipulation that they provide the bank statement. That they okay. sign the addendum providing. The we'll bank sign the, We'll sign the addendum subject to them furnishing the bank statement. That's okay. that's what our motion is. Do I need to correct the verbiage on these nine contracts, or are these going to be? Yeah, Mr. Mills will give you the verbiage. For one, make them all the same. Right, Mr. Mills? Yes, sir. Okay. 
just get the verbiage from Mr. Mills, attach it to him, and sign them. Send them to the chiefs. All right. Do we okay. need to make that addendum before we have the rest of these signed, though? I guess is what I'm asking. Well, can't okay. we make a motion? Can't we make a motion contingent on them uh, adding the addendum sure. to it and approve it? I mean, we'll approve it. Y'all subject to them signing the addendum. I think it's Dave's motion. Well, I'll, I'll, if it wasn't, I'll make it, it okay. that I, <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we approve the interlocal agreements for the nine Hood County Volunteer Fire Departments for 2021 and 2022 with the caveat that we're going to add an addendum that they provide their bank statements. Okay. Second. Well, the motion has been made by Commissioner Eagle that we will approve the interlocal agreements with the nine volunteer fire departments for 2021-2022, provide they sign an addendum saying they will provide their bank statements for the calendar year, to meet calendar year, right, or yes, fiscal sir. year. Cal it, it starts October 1. Yeah, October 1 through September 30th yes, of sir. each year. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Would you like to sign Thank these you. now or you want me to meet you after court? Huh? Do you want to address these now or you want to meet, meet after court? Or do Jeff, I need to get I, the I addendum add, done? I, I'm not concerned with how much money is in their bank. Right. N and I, and I've care. explained that. I, I do not care. This is something we've been trying to do for a long time. I don't care how much money they have in their bank. I, I, I do a lot of accounts this exact same way. Right. This is nothing different that we don't do for numerous entities and the county. I, I'm on board. I, you, the, the opposition's not here. You know, and it's funny because the discussions I've had, that's exactly what, what I've heard, is I'm afraid because we've saved up some money to make a big purchase, it looks like we have, you know. And, and so I think that's the reluctance, but surely we can overcome that. So. We're not going to hold that against them if they're saving money for something, that's for sure. So they're going to still get their equal stipends. That's what we've yes, always sir. done since this court's been here. So assure them of that. Yes, they're sir. not going to be penalized for being parsimonious. Okay. Yes, sir. So I, I guess my question is not understanding the process. Do we do these contracts now or do I do the addendum before we have it signed? Need to do the addendum. Yeah. Okay. And we've already okayed it, so if you yeah. do the addendum, then we can sign it later. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah. Thumbs up. Okay. Thank you. Good deal. Thank you. Okay. Item number four, consider and take appropriate <coughs> action to authorize the county judge to sign the following interlocal agreements for Hood County Animal Control. Judge, commissioners, Kelly and I come before you today to... Hello there. How are you? bring these to you. We would have had them on last uh, two weeks ago agenda, but then we had some issues that um, she needed to work through and make sure everything was just perfect. And so we have those ready for your approval. Um, Kelly's just handed out the ones associated with each one's precinct. So there is um, some of these that are going up, but it's based on the worksheet that you just now received that um, figuring in the the cost of boarding, euthanasia, field calls, everything combined, and then adding in another 2% on top of that, which 2% isn't much at all. But, um, so like Chris and I have on top of here, those $400 of what they have been paying, and they've been up there a lot and taking care of a lot of business, so it's gonna go up to $2,290. Uh, so everybody's got a little bump on theirs, um, but I was talking to um, Commissioner Andrews yesterday and for a city to try to put together their own animal control, it's gonna, they wouldn't be able to touch it with, with this. So they're better off to go with these, these agreements. So um, Granbury, the city of Granbury, they've been paying $8,000. That's first one on the list. Um, it's going to $8,060, so that's pretty close to what it's been. City of Crescent, I just read off, going to $2,290. The toller going from $1,000 to $2,450 based on all the information that we 
have just put out. Stockton Bend, um, it's a small city, but there still has been calls out there. They've been paying $100, and it's going to $300. So that shouldn't break them. And Lipan, going from 1,000 to 1,640. And Dacordova, I didn't have these in the right order. Dacordova is going from $1,000 to $2,590. So we'll make arrangements to get with each one of the cities if you guys approve what we pre presented to you. So any questions? I've got Kelly here to help answer any questions. So the only ones kind of staying the same is Granberry, right? Yes, um, because of their numbers. From we got that right, in other words, pretty close. Yes. And, and what we're doing here is basically just passing along these costs. It's not like we're uh, arbitrarily going yeah. up. These are the actual, no. you know, costs yeah, that we're totally, incurring to take care of yeah, these Yeah, it's totally up to you seniors. whatever the, these need to be or what you want them to be. But the way Kelly has us figured out is this is what it costs to, to provide the, the job to them, too. On the proposal, um, so on your packet that you on the packet you received, um, the first piece is your in a local contract agreement, which um, that's what we're going to be providing for the city. The second um, in that packet is the proposal. That's where you're going to have the breakdown of the food, the manpower, the euthanasia, the manpower, the field assistance, and the manpower and the gas. Um, so, and then on the last page of that packet is your chart that shows you the incidents, public services, and animals that we've handled for each city. Um, we did a 2% increase and we rounded it up to the nearest 10th. Um, we're not factoring in um, safety equipment, uniforms, wear and tear on the um, vehicles, et cetera. So um, what this cost is based on is just the um, boarding euthanasia and field calls. Has, do all these cities know this is coming? Oh, yes. Okay. I've emailed and um, I've already gotten responses. And um, the responses I've had is everyone's on board. So, and I will be, if it's um, agreed to and um, approved today, then I will be going this week to um, each city hall to drop it off for them to sign. And I've taken a look at the city of Con uh, Crescent's contract. All of them reflect the numbers that you gave us right now? Yes, from Thank 2020, you. yes. Thank you. You do a very good job with animal control, doesn't she, Sheriff? Thank she you. She does, yeah. When I first came in as Sheriff, we had our ups and downs and issues and all that, but since she's been in charge, things are running very well. She takes care of the animals, um, the rabies stuff, and the citizens out there that have their concerns. So mm -hmm. she does a fantastic job. Right, and good my job. Team. And my good team. Job. And her team, yeah. yes. So, yeah. Thank you. You got a good department. That's good. So I do hear a motion that I sign the interlocal agreements for the Hood County Animal Control. So made. Okay. Commissioner Eagle has made a motion for the county judge to sign the interlocal agreements for the Hood County Animal Control with the city of Granbury, Crescent, Toler, Stockton, Ben Lipan, De Cordova, second by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those who agree say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're next, I guess, Sheriff. Yep. The next one on the list, number five, is to discuss and take appropriate action to approve JTS invoice ex extending the use of the portable rental tower at a cost of $4,714.29 a month. Um, so we're over three months since this contract went into place. They're not waiting on us. They're, we're waiting on them, but then there's been some different things that they brought up to me. So uh, when I talked to them about it, and I told them that same exact thing, we're waiting on you, not you waiting on us. And um, they said, well, things beyond our control. We're working on it. We'll get it done as quick as we can. But they sent me the bill for an extra month for $4,714.29. And then they said, may you better add that for two months. Well, um, thanks to our friends at Harris, um, they made some phone calls this morning and uh, they sent me a text message just a few minutes ago actually. So um, they had sent us a bill for late fees. They said, never mind, forget that. So 
Um, all they're asking is just an extra month and then whatever it takes, they'll get the job done. So instead of having two months, two additional months, I'm just requesting the 4,714.29 for one month extra. So that, that contract was for 89, I should have brought it with me. It was 89,000, just under 90,000. So this will bump it up another 4,000. So to help them get a little extra time to finish the tower. Okay. This changed from two to one months. Changed from two to one, thanks to our <clears throat> our friends at Harris for giving them a phone call. So, okay, do I hear a motion? Yeah, I'll make that motion, Judge, to uh, approve the uh, extending JTS invoice, extending the use of their portable rental tower at the cost of for one month at the cost of $4,714.29. Second. By Commissioner Eagle to extend the use of the portable rental tower for one month at $4,714.29. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Okay, thank you, And Sheriff. now I'll introduce so, our, our friends at Harris. Oh, good. Where <laughs> are our friends at Harris? You guys can come up. So we've had a couple special called meetings, one here and, or no, at the EOC and then down at the, uh, the old courthouse to discuss the couple different options that we had. So I've asked that um, these guys come in and um, answer any questions uh, that you might still have. Um, in talking with them, the, what I've submitted to you is the grand total of originally was $2,051,223.70. But after talking to them that the city of Granbury has not moved forward with deciding what their system maintenance costs are going to be for two to five years, what they're going to go for, two or up to five. So that's going to deduct $289,269 off the bill. So for this original price summary to enter in this agreement, and correct me if I'm wrong, so that's going to drop it down to $1,761,900. One million, that's a big number. One million, seven hundred and sixty-one dollars, nine hundred, one million, seven hundred and sixty-one thousand, nine hundred and fifty-four dollars and seventy cents. So this has some other stuff on here. That's, that's number, number one is uh, what we're talking about. This is getting things started with a contract and then moving forward and with the Granberry Regional Radio Network System. What so, fund is this coming out of, Ms. Kidd? I was about to ask for 5, 6, 7, and 8. Are they all fund 83? Yes. And that is what account? The Herp Rescue. Sorry, sorry. Rescue. This would be on the record. Thank you. Yeah. So the next uh, two items on there will be, or the next item will be also included in that. So, is there any questions? Um, this will get things started. The project could take up to 18 months to get it going. Um, on the way I understand it on that system maintenance, that'll be 18 months before we get everything in place and it has to be signed off um, that everything works right. Once it gets started, we'll have a year of warranty coverage anyway. So basically two and a half years from now, then before that we'll have to, everybody will get together with that system maintenance, but Granbury has to decide too since we're going into their system. We're going to utilize their system. I felt like, and you guys were part of that, uh, those meetings that I think the cost would be uh, way up there for if we try to do it on our own. So 
I think this is the best bang for the buck, the best program, and I trust the uh, uh, deputy chief of the city of Granbury and, and the way he's planning things. We've already had a number of meetings with him about what he wants to do with it if we get involved in this. So I'm fully behind him on taking care of things. I mean to be getting ahead, but uh, even in item eight, you've already got the numbers in there. Is that the numbers that Grant, you said they hadn't figured out what they were going to charge? And but last it, Tuesday they got that figured out, so I got that on the... So that's what's in item number eight then? Yeah, all of these things pretty much go together, uh, okay. yes. Uh, okay, okay. Figured I had to start with the big one. Okay. I'll just uh, for the record here, you two guys from Harris, you do agree with everything that the sheriff said. I saw you nodding in agreement with everything that the sheriff says about the cost and the numbers. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, what Judge. What is your name, please? I'm Jason LaForge. And so you agree with all these numbers that what Harris is going to do and agreed to do in performing his contract? Yes, Judge. Okay. And the guy, the guy behind you, he was one that was talking all the time in the at the courthouse all the time. You heard everything, too. That's correct, sir. So now you agree with both the sheriff and, the, and your compadres. Yes, sir. We have a contract ready to go. Okay. Good deal. Any further discussion from uh, anybody? That contract also has been looked at by um, our county attorney, Matt Mills, and so we're ready <coughs> to go on that. So I, I've just got one question for Mr. Mills in. You've looked at this confidentiality agreement and you feel like it's oh, you're okay with that? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Do I hear a motion? Speaker, the speaker. On this one, I think. Oh, that's me. Let me see. This is not C9. Number six. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Nanette Samuelson. Good morning again. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, this is a 224 page contract um, and I, I was trying to look through it over the weekend and I had a few questions that maybe either the sheriff or um, the gentleman can, can answer. Um, the first question is uh, where will the infrastructure be housed once it's delivered? The servers. Not the radios and towers, but the actual, the, the servers that will, will house the software. The, the servers uh, reside at the city of Granbury. The network is owned by the city of Granbury. So the servers are housed at the city of Granbury, at the new PD, and at one of their secured tower sites. Okay, and who will, what, after the 18 months implementation, who will be responsible for software patches, uh, new software loads, maintenance, the, things like that? The system administrator for the city of Granbury is gonna be doing all of that in conjunction with our technical team. Okay, so there's a contract in place for the city of Granbury? There will be a contract in place, well, yes, for the city of Granbury, yes. There will be, yes. one, in, there will be one in place with, with them okay. once they execute the contract. And, okay, and we know what that ongoing cost is gonna be for years to come? Yes. Okay, so so on page, um, let me find it. On page seven of 19, section six, on my copy that was posted again, thank you for posting this on the web. Um, there's no, it says the total agreement price to be paid by the seller, um, by the buyer to the seller is, and it's blank. Is there a, that, is that filled in now? Well, yeah, if they vote on it, then it'll be, uh, $1,761,954.70. That's the number that you just gave a minute ago. Okay. Except the special that it, they got just today, right? <laughs> just today. Okay. Okay, and then in the software license agreement, um, when I was looking through this main agreement, the system purchase agreement, <coughs> it refers to the term in the software licensing agreement, but when I look at the software licensing agreement, I can't find a term. What is the term of the? 
of the agreement on the, the software. The agreement will be executed by the city of Granbury, and that's the five or 15 year license agreement that he's talking about that they are working through right now to, uh, to determine if they're gonna do five or 15 year. The 15 year is the most advantageous because the dollar amount is locked into today's dollar. So, so anything that you do will be paid today's dollar and not in the future. Okay, but this software license ag in agreement, which is going to be part of this total package that will be signed by the judge today, does not have a term in it. And it doesn't reference the I, city of Granbury term. I would have to probably get with our contracts guy to get that official answer for you. There's because I'm sure it, I'm sure it references back to the contract. Yeah, it it says that in this contract it says the term of the software is laid out in this software license agreement, but in the software license agreement there's no term. The term that's in here is um, allows the or to cancel, but it doesn't really say anything about the leasee's ability to cancel the agreement or what the term is. So that was a question ongoing, um, just to protect the county from any future, you know, things that they might want to do sure. to maybe cancel or just to know what we're doing. And then just to point out the governing law of the software agreement, um, the license agreement shall be governed by this, um, by the state of New York. So any conflicts that come up between the county and the licensee will be governed by the laws of New York. If that's uh, what you intend, then that's what's in there. Um, so anyway, yeah. So that's good, but um, just realize that anything that might happen is going to be governed by the laws of New York, not by the laws of Texas. So anything that goes to arbitration or or any disputes that you might have is going to be governed by the laws of New York. Equipment is here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, I'm discussion. Can I? I'm going to throw this out there now that Miss Samuelson's brought this up. But there's actually what I'm seeing is there's controversy. The venue would be in Virginia in federal court. Did you catch that? Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm confused. You two gentlemen both live here in Texas, don't you? I live in Cedar Hill, Texas, sir. Not too far away. I don't know right where it is. Sorry? No, right where it is. Yes, sir. Okay. This is not a <clears throat> a first for the state of Texas either, because the Henderson County yes, that's correct. has already moved forward with all of this, and um, so we're not the first one in the line of succession for doing this, so. Anderson, Kaufman County, Rockwall, Dallas Area tra Rapid Transit, uh, Howard County, there's uh, Metrocrest, which is uh, multiple agencies up in North Dallas, which is Town of Addison, Coppell, Carrollton, and Farmers Branch. We have many, many agencies that have uh, executed a contract very similar to this. San Antonio. San Antonio, one of the largest systems, Encore has uh, 136 tower sites. It spans the width of Texas. It's a very, very large system. We have, we have five of the largest <coughs> radio networks uh, in Texas. So we're responsible for building five of those. Any further discussion? Do I hear a motion? I move that we authorize the county judge to sign the system purchase agreement between Hood County and L3 or Harris Technologies, Inc. and to be funded out of Fund 83. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. And we have a motion and second motion by Com Commissioner Wilson to authorize the county judge to sign the system purchase agreement between Hood County and L3 Harris Technology in the amount of $1,761,954.70.
Second by Commissioner Cotton. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next item, discuss and take appropriate action except the JTS Diamond A Tower quote in the amount of $243,775.68 and the JTS Microwave quote in the amount of $363,083.20. So Judge and Commissioners, I've sent you the quotes on this um, when we originally got started and then they did update the quote for the Diamond A Tower because of the cost of steel. Uh, it went up just a little bit. The microwave quote is what's going to interconnect all the tower sites together and make everything work as one. So it all goes hand in hand. If we would have had Harris add this all in, we would have been paying a big percentage more. So uh, they asked us just to go direct to the to the source that they would use. Um, council of Government uses JTS. They built the tower out on Pleasant Court, so uh, they've got a proven record and DIR contracts. Um, so it's all state contract, and uh, then they have helped us the, uh, today with the, the bill on our, on our tower up the street. So, so the, that's the number two, so. Any questions? Do I hear a motion? Judge, I'll make the motion uh, to uh, accept the JTS Diamond A Tower quote in the amount of $243,775.68 and the JTS Microwave quote in the amount of $363,000. $83.20. This would also be funded out of the same account. Uh, 83. 83. Um, out of count, uh, 83. Okay. Second. 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 Second by Commissioner Andrews. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, the next item, eight, discuss and take appropriate action to authorize the county judge to sign and approve the memorandum of understanding with the city of Granbury for regional radio system and to authorize the memorandum of understanding pricing, which includes the sheriff's office, the emergency manager coordinator, the fire marshal, the district attorney, and constables in the approximate sum of $78,936 a year or $6,578 per month. Explain that to a sheriff. So, Judge and Commissioners, this was passed in City Council a week ago last Tuesday um, to set this in stone for any users that would come on board with this Granbury Regional Radio System. So it was also sent to um, County Attorney Mills to look it over and um, so Basically what it amounts to, and I've listed the names up there, but all the county law enforcement um, that we have. So the total users ended up to, and this counts every radio, the handhelds, the mobile radios, the dispatch consoles, all of that. So it totaled up to 185 radio transmitters and receivers. Um, so that comes up to the $6,578 a month or pay it all at one time, 78936 And then I want to remind everybody that um, for a number of years, and I don't recall when that first started, um, the county bills the city for the use of dispatch. That's $135,000 a year and $12,500 a month is what the checks come in to the treasurer. So it does come in monthly, so it's broke down monthly. So however you guys want to break it up. but. This authorizes each radio to use the system. Um, and that's the way all the systems, the Motorola systems, other systems are charged out per usage um, of the system. So that's what, one of the final pieces that we're waiting on and it got set. Um, and so that's the totals right there. Does the treasurer or the auditor have any preference, whether you want money monthly or annually? So this is something I had not talked to the auditor about uh, how to pay it prior to this discussion. All I got was the total bill. So 
Uh, this would be a yearly cost, I guess. This wouldn't start technically for another year and a half anyway. I, uh, I'm not sure um, when it would start. The city attorney sitting back there, I, I don't know if he knows when it would start. On execution of the agreement. Okay. So I guess it starts. That's, that's what any agreement starts, right? Yeah. So, but even if we don't have radios up and. <laughs> what about the service? <laughs> when do we get service? They'll be in default immediately then is what he's saying. Contract for services to be provided. Once we can provide those. Service. No. Yeah, so when they start providing that service, then it'll be when their system is 100% set up, signed off, and ready to go. So this won't even happen anytime soon, but it needed to be known so we knew what the cost is going to be. So, and you should have included the, the, the contract with the city, between the city and the county with, uh, with your packets. Yep. Sheriff, does this fund the 83 also? That'd be up to what you guys want to do, because yes. I didn't ask about that, but it'd be a, a monthly or yearly occurring event, and I guess if you want to do it. For annual, regardless of what number it comes from, but I don't have to say so on what can be paid on day three. Mr. Webster is not here, court, your decision. Let's say put it on there and see what happens. Three. That's what we're going to have with the rest of it, to be honest with you. And that's fine with me. I didn't know what you wanted to do, so. And I'll make a note that Commissioner Cotton agreed with me again today. I appreciate that. As always. It's snowing outside, too, by the way. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, so what are we going to do? You want to you want to wait on this and let it's going to come. Well, that's right. It's going to continue on past the initial will come out of the fund eighty three, right? That's correct. So we get the after we'll pay the, we'll pay the bill. Money's gone. After money's gone, I'll be calling. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Everybody will be gone. <laughs> well, you'll be. I don't like that. You'll be gone and the money will be gone. <laughs> now, there's a temporal connection there that doesn't sound right in there. What is that? You have the right to remain sound. silent. Anything you say, but <coughs> never mind. <laughs> in all honesty, when we begin our 2023 budget, I'm going to start budgeting these things. We will not expend the money, but they will be budgeted. So we will have a balanced budget. And when you need to pay them in the years coming forward, so it's all right with you if we go ahead and pass it now to set it aside out of the ARP money. Yes, sir. But, oh, okay. So I do hear our appropriate motion <laughs> then that we pay these annual fee or annual cost out of the Fund 83 or ARP money. Judge, I'll make a motion to authorize the county judge to sign and approve the memorandum of understanding with the city of Granbury for regional radio systems and to authorize the memorandum of understanding pricing includes the sheriff's office, EMC, fire marshal, DA and constables in the appropriate sum of $78,936 annual cost, I won't even say monthly, uh, the annual cost, uh, and paid for from Fund 83. I hear a second. Second. Second by motion made by Commissioner Cotton, second by Commissioner Andrews. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. And judge and commissioners, on this sheet that I handed you, it, I didn't get it in time to put it on the agenda, so it's not on the agenda. But number four on down, um, we bought the, the radios before all this ever got started, So, but they, we didn't buy trunking radios for the sheriff's office and the DA's office that started using it originally. So this has cost um, to upgrade them to trunking or the lower 
thing or the 65 new cost, um, what it would cost to buy new radios. And I got a quote from uh, Harris to do that. So uh, we can discuss that and possibly put it on another agenda coming up. So I just wanted you to know since I had it on that sheet altogether. So if okay. you weren't wondering what that was. All right. So that's just we'll take that up next time. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay, that brings us to item number nine. Discuss and take appropriate action to improve the pay rate for all part-time election workers. The increase is as follows. Election day judges and alternate judges, $15 per hour and $14 per hour for all early voting and election day clerks. The increase will be effective October the 1st, 2021. And we have Ms. Michelle Carew to speak first. Yes, ma'am. Good morning again. The reason why I was bringing this to you guys to have approved in court is during the budgeting process, I brought this and it was approved during the budgeting process. So I, I will have the money in budget effective October 1. Plus we have early voting coming in just a sh few short weeks. So I would like to increase their pay. It's my understanding that the last time they had an increase was in the last few years. I don't have an exact year to give you, but I know it was in at least three years ago that they were increased to $12 an hour. One of the great things that I can tell you about this is that legislation just passed an increase for reimbursement to counties up to $12 an hour. So during a primary, on election day, the state will pay $12 an hour and the county will only be responsible for the difference. Um, on the elections that we don't have reimbursements on, it looks as though the maximum it's going to be per vote center is $196 increase. So just right under $1,800 increase per election to give this increase to the judges and alternate judges and the clerks. Okay. So you're in favor of this? Yes, please. Okay. And Mr. Gomez, you have asked to speak on this, so would you come forward? I think you're the, is there anyone else out here that's asked to speak? I don't have a paper here, I don't think. I have two speakers for item number Well, 11. I speak, uh, thank you, gentlemen, given us the opportunity to speak. I speak on behalf of the judges and clerks as being an alternate judge in one of the larger uh, voting centers here in Hood County. A judge is not just a person that's handing ballots and so on. They run the show. They're responsible not only for equipment. We play different roles. The equipment, continued training of our clerks, and that's the way you build a good election team is you train them, and we're responsible for that. Yes, the, off, the election office provides some training, but there's nothing like hands-on training. You just can't throw somebody out there. So again, we deal with that. We deal with the public. Sometimes people get upset because they're not in the voting register. They, they didn't have a change of address or whatever, okay? So you have to deal with those people too. You deal with the technology. Sometimes you have problems with the machines, sometimes with the tablets. So here you go. So you're all over the place all the time. At the end, those two judges are responsible for what happens in that voting center for 14 hours. Currently, at $12 an hour, we're working 14 hours straight time pay, no overtime. And that's both your clerks and your judges. And your clerks probably work about from 12 to 13 hours. And one thing we do, we're responsible judges also, is that if it slows down and you have four clerks, five clerks sitting there, you may ask them, you want to leave? And you release some of them and trying to save some money, okay? So we're conscientious of not abusing money either, okay? By keeping people when you don't need them. Otra cosa también, hablando en español, I bring that talent, which I've utilized it in the elections. I'm not asking for compensation, but that's an additional fact that uh, you have to understand that at times we have bilingual you have to use your bilingual skills. And I have utilized them. So I'm in favor of this. And I think everybody that works elections will appreciate that you appreciate that the work they do by increasing their compensation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
you agree with what he said there? Oh, absolutely. Sure. And just so that you guys know, it is required by law that we have at least one bilingual person in each vote center on every election day, depending on um, the number of surnames within the county and those districts in which it's in, we could have a t uh, need to have two bilingual workers, but we don't pay them any extra. Everybody gets paid the same across the board. Okay. All right, good. Do I hear a motion? I'll, I'll make that motion, and I appreciate what Mr. Gomez does, and I've, I've worked elections myself uh, in ballot board, and y'all, you, you guys do a great job. I appreciate it. And I'll make the motion to raise the pay to $15 for election judges, election workers, as noted in the agenda item. Second. Motion is made by Commissioner Eagle to approve the pay rate for part-time election workers as follows. Election day judges and alternate judges, $15 per hour and $14 per hour for all early voting and election day clerks. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this brings us to item number 10. Discuss and take appropriate action regarding a 90-day burn ban for Hood County. Now, if there's got rain in the forecast for this week. Yes, sir, this is a uh, test in theory. I think the last time I asked for a burn ban, it rained for 14 days. Well, I um, hope you're right well. again. So when I had put this on the agenda, there was no rain in the forecast as of yet. Um, right now, our low is 545, our high is 686, and we're sitting on an average of 621.9 on the KBDI, which is the Keechan Bender Drought Index. So usually when it starts getting into the 600s is when we start really paying attention and watching the weather conditions. Um, we have had some just random grass fires started from power lines or whatever but it, it's not to the point of being overwhelming yet. If this weather doesn't materialize and we don't get any rain, then we'd probably really have to seriously consider this. But as of right now, I, with the rain in the forecast, I'd be willing to wait another two weeks if you wanted to hold off on the burn ban. We can test the theory and see if putting it on the agenda is actually gonna create rain. I'll go wash my car too. <laughs> right. Did you put that on the screen? Somehow, somewhere out there on Facebook or somewhere, they somebody put a video out there of a controlled grass fire. But I've never. It, it's it's amazing. I've seen how fires how quickly they get out of control. But yes. that thing be, became. Uh, I, I've never seen such a thing as that with that wind blowing. Right. And well, and here recently we've had really low um, humidity levels. Winds have been blowing a little bit. So you mix that dry fuel low humidity, high winds, you get a little bit of a fire and it will spend the whole day chasing it. Yeah, I'll bet. I mean, now and then, if, if you do need it, you really don't need to come to court. You and the, the judge can actually put the burn ban on you if... Correct. I, I can ask the judge for an emergency burn ban. So it, if it's just getting out of control, I can go speak with the judge. We can do a, a burn ban and then run a 90-day through court again at that point. But Yeah. So right now, I guess it's really just a test in theory. I wanted to see if it'll really make it <laughs> rain if we talk about a burn ban in court. Okay. So just the mere putting it on the agenda will cause it to rain. I, I think so, because there's, you I mean, it's to forecasted to start tonight for the next five days. Well, let me get it clear, though. You don't want any money for doing this from the county. We're a rainmaker. No, sir. This one's free of charge. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. So we're just going to pull this, and in case it doesn't rain this week, you may talk to me. We get get one for a week. Yes, sir. And then we'll put it back on the burn van for the following two weeks. And Perfect plan. Okay, okay, that's the deal. So we're Thanks, pulling sir. this one now. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number 11, discuss and take appropriate action to renew or terminate economic development service agreement between Hood County and Granbury Chamber of Commerce. We've got two speakers that want to speak on this. One is Mr. Mike Scott and one is Mr. Harold Granick. I don't know who filed first. Makes no difference. Dr. Granick. <laughs> they are both being magnanimous to each other here. I want to make a note of that. Okay, Mr. Scott, Mike Scott. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners, Mike Scott, private citizen. Um, <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you guys. Um, 
I think I think we've had a great run. I, I pretty much get the fact that this is probably a done deal and this is merely a formality on number 11. Um, but we had a great run. Um, I think uh, I hated to see Shay leave, but I understand why she left, which I'll talk about in a minute. But, um, you know, we, we brought in, we, Shay primarily, but the chamber and Shay and, and you guys and the city brought in two $200 million projects. I've been in economic development for 30 years. I've been in economic development in Granbury for 15 years. I have never seen the success that we had in the last year and a half. Um, I, I read this agenda item and I felt like I was in Groundhog Day. <clears throat> I've watched seven economic developers come and go in Hood County and it's always the same reason. Some rogue politician decides that he or she wants to be in charge. And so they start spreading rumors that, well, we're probably not gonna, we're probably not gonna fund this again next year. How do, how do you think you're gonna keep a person, a good person with a family in Granbury doing economic development if they don't know from one day to the next whether they're gonna have a job? So, so I've watched seven people come and go. One guy came twice. He said, I'm gonna try this again. Surely Granberry will figure it out. And we haven't, okay? Uh, I can't tell you when I was at the chamber how many people, how many developers called me and said, wow, thank you. We need an advocate to, to work with the city and the county. And, and you know, back in the day, uh, we had five people on the Economic Development Committee. It was the 501C3, two county commissioners and two city council uh, members and one private person. And that was a recipe for disaster. I mean, it was a dogfight every time we went in there, okay? Uh, what we had was an honest broker in Shea. We had somebody who could hold the hand of a developer or a commercial entity and walk them through the process. And I'll tell you, it's not a pretty process. I've been through it once on my own, and it's difficult, uh, you know, to, to deal with the city or the county without somebody to be your advocate with the various entities, the various controlling entities. So um, Parker County's figured it out. They had an economic development entity and they recently created a 501c3 and all of their cities are funding that 501c3 because they realize we're all in this together guys it's economic development we look at the traffic out here you know rooftops do not pay the freight and that's where we're growing in granbury so we can either be a bedroom community of maybe crescent i don't know but certainly of fort worth if you sit out on 377 and you sit west on 377, you watch the traffic coming into Granbury, you go, where are all these people coming from and where are they going? Uh, we need businesses, we need corporations in Granbury where our kids can go to work and they don't have to commute to Addison or Dallas or wherever to work. Uh, so, you know, economic development, people think is sexy, so they want to they get their fingers in it and they want to control it. Um, I think we had the best of all worlds. I hate to see it go away. Uh, can the city do it? Sure, they can do it. But I'll tell you, Granberry, I could line up developers all the way out this door that will tell you how difficult it is to do business in Granberry and Hood County. And the number of phone calls that I got when I was at the chamber saying, wow, Thank you, it's incredible. I mean, Shay's running interference for us. She's working, she's walking us, holding us by the hand, walking us through the city. And the city was thrilled with the, with the setup, the way it was. Uh, Chris Kaufman told me that on numerous occasions. So I, I pray that we're not making a mistake here. Uh, there are various ways to do economic development, but I think the answer for Granbury, we need to all get on the same sheet of music, folks. We don't need rogue people out there taking shots at what we're doing. We need to all work together and make this a great community. Otherwise, our taxes are gonna go through the roof. Mine are locked in. Ron, yours are probably locked in. But, but rooftops are not gonna pay the freight. We need commercial development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Okay.
Dr. Graddick. Not my area of expertise. Thank you for allowing me to talk. Uh, strikes me that the motto that if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. It seems to have worked well in the past. I'll defer to Mike's better judgment. Uh, I think we maybe should continue on this, especially since even the rooftop development seems to be running into a problem due to the sewage issue. So maybe we should continue to have an economic development. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I got something. Since I'm the one that put this on the agenda, we put this on the agenda 90 days ago to uh, pursuant to the contract and I put it back on the agenda today because the period of t the, the agreement terminates on September the 30th uh, since the last few the last few weeks that have gone by yes Miss Shea uh, Shea resigned and went to Tennessee now I've talked to Shea and we were in discussions about uh, getting with the city and getting more money to the to her to help with economic development. There were a lot of things going on, and she went to ten. I, I realize that there's some out there that have attributed her leaving to go to Tennessee to whatever's going on in economic development here, and that is absolutely not true. And you can talk to her yourself. Whatever the case, this contract has Mike Scott all in it, and he brought it to us, and he's gone. It's got Shay in it. She was brought in, and I really appreciated what Shay did. We, uh, you know, I thought Shay did a very good job. Uh, but right now, she's gone. And I'm not, you know, the, I'm just talking about this contract. Do we not have $100,000 put in the budget for this? So that, this is not saying that we're not going to come back to this. This is just saying we're not going to renew this contract in my opinion, because there's nobody to renew it with. We need to renegotiate. I'm certainly not get against economic development. However, with that said, there's different philosophies about that. The chamber thinks it should be all involved with the county, with two government entities. I disagree with that. Doesn't mean I'm against economic development. Economic de development, as far as the government is concerned, in my opinion, is the government should get out of the way. The government should make your the tax is low, and it, you talked about problems with the city. The problems that developers have with the city have nothing to do with economic development. It has to do with trying to get permitted and get their development projects through, a city that's very difficult to work with sometimes. So we need to look at all of the issues with economic development, and this is not saying we're not going to do it. It's just saying that we're not going to renew this contract. And we've got $100,000 earmarked for this to come back to. And whenever the city's ready to come back and we can all get together, I'm certainly in favor of listening and being part of that. So that's the re but it had to be on here this time because of the, the, the just because of the date of the contract. Anybody else have any comment or discussion? Yes, ma'am. I agree that we that economic development is great for a city, for a county. However, we have to. Uh, just this past weekend, I talked to a businessman who is trying to uh, increase his business by building a new building and hiring more employees. But because of all the red tape and everything that's going on, and all the the, the restrictions that are going on between city and county, etc. He's been told he's got to wait two, two years before he can build a new building to increase his business. And his business is booming. So I think you know, we, need, we need to think about also doing the infrastructure. I keep hearing about water issues, uh, water plant issues, and sewage issues, and road issues, and all that. Well, in order to, to get everything developed, we need to take care of our infrastructure and cut the red tape, cut rid of all the BS that's going on between the governments. And, and, and let's get down to work with it. And yes, keep the taxes low. We're already burdened with a lot of taxes. Yes, we need the commercial uh, businesses to come in and provide different jobs. But we've got to think about our infrastructure. You can't support a business or development. I love it, development. But we've got to take care of our infrastructure. 
That's just my two cents. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Yes, Judge. I'm going to make a motion to to go ahead and terminate this economic development service agreement between Hood County and the Granbury Chamber of Commerce until further notice. But I just got I've just got a question. Is it we're not we're just not going to renew. We're not really terminating. It's going to terminate if we don't renew. Isn't that correct? I, I don't know if I'm messing with words, but we're just not if we don't renew the contract, then we don't have one. And it's an annual contract. But we have to give them notice. So we gave them the notice and we're just we're just not going to renew. Right. Is that a different way of putting it or we can do that. We can well, not renew it. It, it. I don't know why it sounds better that way. That I'm not terminating it, I'm just not going to renew it. And if someday we do, we do. We got the budget for it. So anyway. Well, then I have no argument with that. And I will rephrase my motion. And I will make the motion that we not renew the economic development services agreement between Hood County and the Chamber of Commerce. Second. Okay, a motion. Any discussion? Can I speak? Yes. I you may want to you may want to think about that because it's it's a five-year contract you don't renew it every year you have to give a 30-day notice and 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 by the way that that contract doesn't have mike scott written all over it. it's got economic developers all over the state of texas written all over it because <laughs> because it's like most in fact that particular one came from the dallas economic development corporation primarily um, but anyway, I think, I think you'll find, Commissioner, that the contract is a five-year contract and it requires a 30-day notice to cancel it. So if you've already given the 30-day notice, then you can, you can back out of that. But, but to say you're not renewing it, there is no renewal. It's a five-year contract. You either cancel it or you continue for five years, I believe. Is that, I realize you're an attorney actually, and I'm not, but. Actually, uh, Mr. Scott, you're correct. And so I really need to go back to the terminate because I'm read. I've got the I got the term right here. It automatically renews after the five years. So, exactly. so can I ask again? If if we don't terminate it, that means we've got to pay it, and we don't really have an economic development. So that wouldn't it wouldn't seem right to pay it if we don't have one. So I'm agreeing with you. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But according to the language of the contract, we just need to terminate it today. We leave the money. The money's in the budget, and then when. When its life is breathed back into it, we can come back to it any time. So let me go back to my original motion, just to be to make sure it's clean according to the contract. Thank you, Mr. Scott. And I'll make the motion that we terminate the contract uh, as signed by Mr. Scott. So you're actually on here, Mike, and uh, at the last page. And uh, <laughs> and uh, just terminate the contract. That's that's terminates by on September the 30th of this year. I'll still second it. Okay. The only other further discussion I'd like to say is that I agree with Mike Scott. Shea Hopkins was excellent. I've worked with her a lot. I'd like to say one thing is that when the Texas Unemployment Commission Workforce Commission asked me to be on the task force, I called Mike Scott and said, you know, if you're looking for all the land, you also have to look for all the employees. So for rather me going down to Tarrant County or Arlington, wherever it was at the time, I said, I'd like for Shea to go down since he's kind of heading up economic development. Mike Scott agreed with me and we three of us went down there and I brought and introduced Shea and then we went back, it was in the middle of a meeting. So we go back six weeks later and Shea Hopkins was a director of that em unemployment, wasn't she? I mean, she was a go-getter and I told her I hated to lose her and she was really good and I told her if she ever needed a recommendation, I would really give her one because the projects that she brought in well paid for the money that we paid for her. So do you agree with that? She knew, she's a big girl. She knew she, what she was getting into. Quite honestly, Granberry's reputation with economic development directors is we eat them in two years and spit them out. So she knew what she was getting into. And 
that's the situation we're in. It's going to be difficult to find a, a good economic development person that's willing to take that chance. Okay. All right. We have a motion to terminate the economic development service agreement between Hood County and Granbury Chamber of Commerce by Commissioner Eagle, second by Commissioner Cotton. All those in favor of termination say aye. 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 All of those who are opposed say nay. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, next item discuss and take appropriate action to authorize road ops to pick up and haul off debris at. Ten Top Highway and Hilltop Road, if needed. Yes, uh, Judge, I put this on the agenda, and I had to talk to Mr. Lenny about this. We had a little. Uh, let's just say there was a, there was an effort to get some cleanup out in OTS, and uh, there was a um, it it was like a grass fire. It kind of got out of hand once it started, and. Um, so at this juncture, there's only, from what I can tell, I, I talked to Mr. Tillerson today. Uh, he, as the chief of the fire department, he agreed that he was going to burn that, what was left that was, was brush, et cetera. Uh, he went out there to do that, and the people that were cleaning it up, the ones who started the grass fire, had, that's the only thing left out there. So I wanted to put this on the agenda in case, because it was uh, it was the precinct one's people that were bringing it over to precinct four. <laughs> I, I know I know good and well that's what it was what was happening. And no so wind came out and it was blowing across hey. the street. <laughs> so anyway, I just I, it, we may not even need to do this. Uh, it looks they've got everything out of there except this brush and some pallets and things like that. They're kind of like not supposed to burn the pallets. But uh, if we could do this in case, if we could vote this in in case, but I don't think we'll need it. Do you have anything to add, Jeannie, or either one of you, Jeannie or Don? They can bring the pallets to the collection station for free. If, if they can get them from out there to the collection station, we we'll use them. If they're usable, we, we use them to place the cardboard belts and everything on. We we'll keep them stacked. We keep the stack on hand. Okay. Well, if that's the case, the two commissioners are going to tell their people to run out there real quick and get them and haul them back to their precinct then on the thing. Okay. All right. So anyway, can I, I'd like to just make a motion to authorize road ops to pick, it up, pick up any debris left if it need, they need to. Uh, and again, I don't think that's going to have to happen, but I'd like to make that motion. Better second it. Well, <laughs> I'd like I, I'd like to. I just want to make sure it's clear that we're not going on private property. This is out of our right of way. Is that clear to you? Property owned by the Property owned by the eight. So it's private property, and we're authorizing somebody from the county to go on private property and abate some trash. Is that what we're doing? I just want to make sure. With permission. I'm not in favor of that. Now, if it's on our right of way, belongs to the county, the county should clean it up. Uh, I don't have any problem with that. But I do have a problem with going on to private property, HOA or otherwise, and abating trash. That's not what we do. Uh, I hate to get started down that road because there's going to be a bunch of that. That's okay. That's, that's fine. I, ma I made the motion. We got a second. If we vote it down, that's cool. That's all I can do is. It, it's a homeowners association that's where the. The homeowners association owns the property that the. Uh, I, be, I believe it was the Stonewater Church that organized this. They had roll offs, and as Commissioner Eagle stated, it got out of hand. This. There were large piles, and it was all mixed. And I, I believe volunteers from Stonewater have since separated it to where it's just a brush pile. And there was a small amount of other debris left the last time I was on location. They were trying to clean it up. But right now, we're trying to get it cleaned up where they can secure the Homeowners Association can secure this area back 
to stop any additional illegal dumping on the site. Commissioner, I've been involved when we've done the cleanup in that area, and you have a, you have a day. You take a day, and your group and your citizens sure. come and bring whatever they want to dispose sure. of. And we give them, and we give them free tickets to, to, to take it to CCS. Okay. Well, totally, in, I support that. that day is over, it still keeps coming. So it's really no one's fault, and I'm certainly hoping the county can help them. Well, that's a, a big area that needs <laughs> That's not my... In it, we've done that. It's called community cleanups. We've done that, and we've given free. What do we call it? We give them tickets to have their weekend to clean up their association. I mean, yeah, we can do that. But the county actually going on private property and abating trash. We've done that. I don't. Rec I. I remember prior to me getting on court, it was a big deal between Commissioner Barry and the rest of the court about doing that, having the county clean up. Isn't that correct? Yes, private property and it got voted down that we we don't do that we take care of the county right away but uh let me I, let I, me try I, to I help just, you out here okay. uh mr mills do you see anything not legal about this uh, going out here if we need to and that it's a vacant area and picking up anything that's left i don't think we're going to have to do it but i don't want to create a yeah you know, i certainly don't want to create uh any controversy over something is like this i don't recall that we've done this in the past i know we've done the vouchers and we've had you know ways for people to dump at the collection station i don't know that we've gone on as commissioner cotton said i mean uh, theoretically there could be some liability deal where you know if somebody gets hurt or whatever there could be some controversy in theory but well, uh, you know, based on that, I'm going to withdraw my motion, and uh, well, hopefully we can get it cleaned up, and if we can't get it cleaned up, we'll revisit it next court, and maybe we can find some law, but I think that, I think they're going to get it done, because actually, the, the, fire mar the fire marshal, the fire chief over there went over there to burn it, and the folks that had started this deal said, no, they're going to take care of it. So this was just kind of a in, just-in-case backup, but I'll withdraw my motion. Okay, so the withdraw the motion. That brings us to the next item, item number 13, discuss property value, tax rate, and fiscal year 2022 budget. Ms. Kidd. <clears throat> the, the only item that I wanted to talk about here was the actual dollar amounts of the fiscal year 2021 budget. Revenue and expense for the 2021 budget is $35,449,471. For fiscal year 2022, revenue and expense budgets equal $35,612,338. This is a difference of $162,867 or 0.005% increase. Just wanted to clarify that. That's all I have. Okay, no action to be taken on this. All the rest has been, been voted on. Okay, this brings us, I think, to the last item, number 14, about the lease negotiations for 1322 Paluxy Highway. Uh, Mr. Mills, are you prepared to go into executive session to discuss this? Yes, sir. Okay, so at this time, at uh, seven minutes to 11, uh, Commissioner's Court is going to adjourn into executive session. We are convened back into the Commissioner's Court. It is now 11-12, and we're back on the record in Commissioner's Court. And we had discussed item number 14 about discuss and take appropriate action regarding the lease negotiations for 1322 Paluxy Highway. So we've been there. Do I hear a motion? <laughs> Let Davey do it. Okay, I'll make the motion. Are you going to make a motion, sir? I am. Okay. I move that we authorize the county attorney to go back to the individuals at 1322 Paluxy Highway for the numbers that we stipulated during executive session and go in accordance with the contract. 
Uh, do we need to? Uh, I think we need to make the number. Okay. I, mean, I will amend my motion. The fact that the uh, one of many numbers actually. So whichever one you well, think. I think that the, we need to go with the 1850 per square foot. That's and, and then the rest of the contract stays the same. If not, we will operate in accordance with the contract. With a, uh, can I add to that? Yeah. Just yeah. a suggestion, 90 day notice to uh, vacate the building by January 1st? Right, you yes, mean, that's what I was going to say. So, I was say in accordance with the contract. Right, so it's month to month at the same rate until the end of the year if they don't want to renew it, or if they want to renew it, it's 1850 a foot. Is that? I think that's. I think I, that sounds. I mean, there are so many things talked about. Maybe that's it. I think. Right. I mean, it, it does have a month-to-month -month provision, and we need to give them 90 days if they don't want to renew. So it'll be 1850 a foot for 90 days. Okay. If they don't want to renew, if they do want to renew, it's 1850 a foot for a three-year deal on the same terms. Otherwise, we do the maintenance and, and whatnot. County continuing the maintenance right. of the facility. Right. Right. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. Got that right. <laughs> okay. so motion been made by Commissioner Eagle, second by uh, Commissioner no. no Commissioner Wilson. I'm sorry, second by Commissioner Eagle. And uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed say nay. Motion carries five to zero.